Let's talk about the movement of water. Water in an ocean is able to move freely, just like CSF within the ventricles. However, water in the compart uh, water within a compartment, just like this one inside the cell, or within a crowded space, are relatively less free. In the left picture, we have uh, water that is that has no restriction in its movement or diffusion, while the case on the right, water is able to move. However, it is less free compared to the one here on the left. Note that water here may be intravascular, intravascular, intracellular, or extracellular. So let's take three instances. What if water is restricted uh, within the cell, uh, such as what would happen if we have a stroke, or if the membrane pumps are unable to function, or if a cell is within a crowded space, such as a hypercellular tumor, or within a viscous environment, such as an abscess, what will happen to the movement of water in those cases? Uh, so there will be a restriction in the movement. So from this concept, uh, a sequence was created to reflect the status of this water movement. When we talk about diffusion images, uh, concepts shared by Dr. Rowley, diffusion is a family of images. So T2 is the mother, DWI are the sons, and then let me extend this analogy to saying that the ADC is the grandson. In order to create a DWI, you need a T2 sequence, and in order to create an ADC image, uh, you need at least two DWIs of different uh, B values. So if we take a look at this increasing B values, there is one of them which is most similar to T2, and that is the B0. As one increases the B value, freely moving water as, um, here in, inside the ventricles will reduce its signal seen here in the CSF. Another concept is that the DWI does not forget about its mother. It means that if there is high T2 signal uh, on T2, that signal will spill over or reflect within this DWI sequence. So for example, this uh, area in the right temporal lobe, there is a T2 hyperintense signal as well as a DWI hyperintense signal. But when we check uh, the ADC map, there is no corresponding drop. Therefore, this is what we call the T2 shine through. Uh, just a comparison, if there is a hyperintense signal in both T1 and DWI with a corresponding drop in the ADC, this is what we call the true restricted diffusion. So in these two cases, this one is an example of a hyperintense signal in DWI because of the T2 shine through. So if there's T2 shine through, there's also what we call a T2 dark through. If there is an intense high po intense signal in T2, say for example in deoxyhemoglobin, this high po intense signal will reflect or spill over onto the DWI images because DWI does not forget about its mother. So in this example, the periphery of the lesion here is the um, only part which exhibits true restricted diffusion denoted by hyperintense signal um, in DWI with a corresponding drop on the ADC.